All right, good morning again. This is the second of three videos that deal with a pop-up assignment. Remembering you can do either a pop-up, which is meant to be seen from the front only like this, so it doesn't matter what the back looks like at all. You can see again that I use a lot of scrap paper here to make better use of it. You can either do a pop-up or, inspired by this thing that came from the 100 yen store, you can do a mobile, four elements, same number of elements, same number of sheets of watercolor paper, except in this case, you would have to do both front and back and both sides would have to be done well, okay? Not just one side well and the other side poorly done, but both sides well. In this case, because I copied this leaf on the back here, I could paint both sides, I could make it a mobile or I could make it a stable pop-up. Same, same here. Same thing on the back, I could paint both sides, not a big deal. I think I'll opt for the easier assignment. This has already been painted once, the surface is dry. You can paint it again, and I'm gonna go ahead and use a little salt. Notice how I come in from my right side since I'm right-handed, and I use the colors generously, snapping those caps when I'm done. The salt you'll see in just a little bit adds some interesting texture to the piece. Um, you might like to use the salt. I'm gonna come back in here with a blue. Are these autumn colors? I don't know. Are they colors I like? Yep. We've talked about those types of colors before, the colors that you just wanna use because you like them, and that type of color is called arbitrary color. Remembering again, I'm right-handed, so I come in from my right, I'm generous with the color, I turn the paper to make it easy for me to get that point of that marker where it needs to be. You can see I'm only gonna be working over here on this right side of the leaf for just a little bit. I've gotta have my water, I've gotta have my brush, I've gotta have my towel. I'm right-handed, so all of these things are on my right side. You control the amount of water in the brush using the lip of the water container. You can also control the amount of water in the brush using the towel. It's important that you not have too much water and not have too little water. Water. Again, it's one of those instances in art where you've got to have just the right amount. What I'm going to do is go in here with a little bit of water and my bristles on my brush take a point. They hold a point. That's important. I'm going to re-dissolve that purple. I'm going to re-dissolve that blue. I'm going to add a tiny bit more water. If I have quite a bit of water here, this is a good time right away to add a little bit of salt. Now that will create some crystalline effects in a little bit that appear a bit like this, what you see under the camera right now. It's a nice contrast, that texture is a nice contrast to areas that are otherwise very, very flat. Again, go in with your water, redissolve. I'm painting right on top of an earlier color, no problem doing that. I take the point of my brush and move it around in ways that allow me to get the color exactly where I need it to be and take out extra water if I want to. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. That's kind of a more interesting leaf than it was before. It was pretty anemic, pretty uninteresting over there. And the salt's beginning to have a little bit of its effect. Over here, underneath the orange watercolor, I actually have some pencil. Colored pencil, you can do that too. You can put colored pencil on top or underneath uh, as long as the paper is dry. So here I have orange pencil, and I might decide to go in here and strengthen this color a little bit. Paper's still a little bit damp, I can tell. That way, that way the pencil's not wanting to go down. I can strengthen that color a little bit, and gosh, it's hard to tell whether I did that with pencil or whether I did that with watercolor, okay? So you can use lots and lots of different materials together on watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is very, very sturdy. Uh, it takes a lot of abuse. Your watercolor, however, does not need to take a long time. You just have to do it with precision, making sure always to control the amount of water in the brush pulling on the lip, pulling on the towel, maintaining a point always, and then adjusting the paper in ways that allow you to come in from your right, if you're right-handed, or from your left, if you're left-handed, so that you can get placement of both the marker and the brush exactly as you want to. I'm gonna take some green right now. Coming in from my right, I'm gonna put green right there. Okay, I just decided. And then, of course, I'm going to bleed that out. I'm gonna blend that out with some water. Coming in with the point of my brush, I wet it, I adjusted the amount of water in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and soften that inside edge, make it look like that green flows into the leaf a little more naturally. It neutralizes the orange, gives me more of a brown. That's quite all right for this type of painting in the autumn. And there I have it. That one is done, ready to go when it's dry to be cut out and included with my four element pop-up. You can see I have other pieces started or not yet started. I have to have at least four sheets of paper for this before I can construct. Now, you try.